What is going on YouTube? KT93 here with a remastered version of my around tutorial. Now I'm going to be doing all of the arounds that are the index, middle, and ring around. I will not be going over the thumb around again, obviously, because I've done that in a tutorial already. And I'm not going over the pinky around, even though that is a trick that you can do. It technically, well, it is a fingerless trick. And I'm not going to be going into fingerless tricks for a very long time for the sake of simplicity and uh, just complication factors and whatnot. I want to start off with the easier tricks in the beginning of this remastered series and then take up the level of difficulty slowly. So we're going to be going over the three main arounds aside from the thumb around that are the index, middle, and ring around again. And because I'm doing all three of these in one video, instead of doing an individual video for each one, I'm not going to be showing each of them at the beginning right now, but I'm going to be showing the uh, trick and the slow-mos as I go along in the video. And then I'll put all the slow-mos again at the end. So that is what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're going to start off with the index around because that is the first finger on your hand. That's not the thumb, I guess. So the index around looks like this. As you can imagine, the concept is very similar to a thumb around, but you're doing it instead with your index finger and your middle finger, uh, in this case for the index around. For the other rounds, you just need the finger that's below the finger you're doing the around on. So you only need two fingers for these arounds. So for this, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to be doing the trick or I just did the trick, just those two fingers. You don't need anything else. So just like the thumb around, I mentioned that when you first hold it, you hold it with about like a third of the pen here and then two thirds here because the pen needs some distance to travel around your thumb in this case uh, or this example so that it's balanced pretty much all the way through until you end the trick. Very similar idea, actually the identical idea when you're doing an index, middle, and ring around. So you need to have more of the pen, about two thirds or three quarters, I guess, um, closer to you because when you do the around, you need some space for the pen to travel around your finger so that it's balanced most of the time as you're doing the trick. So again, you wanna hold most of the weight towards you like this and you can break this down into two steps, pretty much the push and then the catch. To practice the push is very similar to how I told you guys to practice the thumb around push. Just kind of don't try to catch it at all. Just try to hold it in starting position and then push with, with however much force you think you need. I'll give you a little tip. You will need to push a little bit stronger than you would with the thumb around just because the inherent direction of the around is in this plane here or this plane here. And this plane is the same plane that gravity acts in. So you have an extra factor of gravity putting into the weight of the pen going this way. So you need to push a little bit more this way so that it goes, you know, it's kind of basic physics. But anyway, just do a little experimenting in terms of how much force you think you need. Clearly that was too light, for example. Clearly that was too much, for example. But once you start doing it often, you'll start tuning it. Slowly, you'll understand how much force you need to get the pen to go over your finger. Again, we're not trying to catch it at this point. We're just trying to get a feel for how much force you need for the pen to go around and not be, for example, if you were to push too much, you could you know, do that, in which case the pen is not actually contacting your hand or your finger after about it gets to the top. After it gets to the top, if you're pushing too hard, it'll go like this and note how it doesn't roll over your finger as it should, like it does on the around. So that is the push. The same concept can be applied to the middle and ring around as well, but we're going to be talking about the index around still for a majority of this video and then transferring that knowledge down the hand. When you do the around, after you do the push, Look at where my middle finger is right now. If I were to keep it here, the pen would hit it. Like the bottom part of the pen that I'm holding would hit it and it wouldn't do the around. You need to move your middle finger in a little bit so that the pen clears it as it's spinning. But as soon as the pen clears your middle finger, see my middle finger can like now move freely without hitting the pen. You want to then extend your middle finger out and probably the rest of your other fingers too, just to make it easier. See how my fingers were like this at first. You want to do this as the pen is spinning and get ready to accept the pen on the other side of that roll. So again, you do that push, but as soon as the pen, as soon as you're done pushing, basically, you wanna be moving your middle finger back over like that. And I didn't purposely catch it there just to show you what the timing should look like. 
But trust me, if I were to actually move my middle finger back in, not that one. If I were to move my, my middle finger back in, it would have caught it. And then of course you just kind of catch it like you do the thumb around, except you know, the thumb around, I said you just kind of clamp down on it. You are kind of clamping down on it, but with the finger that is below the finger you're doing the around on. So in this case, that finger would be the middle finger. Push, extend the fingers again, and then clamp down on it and do that. So that is how you do an index around. Again, it's just getting a feel for how much force you need and the timing. It's a very fluid motion, except that one, that one wasn't right. Similarly, you can do it with the middle around. It's the same idea. If you have problems, just push it to get a feel for how much force you need. And after you've done that a lot, so for example, after it falls pretty much directly below your hand consistently, then try moving your ring finger out to get ready to accept it. And you don't have to actually catch it if you're just practicing this timing, right? That was a little bit weak. That was too weak. But you get the idea, right? So there's that. And then if you actually try to catch it, you'll catch it like that. Not that. Like that. The pinky around, or sorry, not the pinky around, the ring around tends to be the hardest of the arounds because as I mentioned in one of my other videos, I think it was the charge and the finger pass videos, um, a lot of people's ring and pinky fingers are joined by nerves or by tendons or something like that. So if they pull one down, both of them tend to come down. I have been lucky, I guess, or my genetics or physiology is good for pen spinning because I can individually move them like that. And for some reason that freaks people out, but I digress. Um, your pinky tends to be your weakest finger because you don't really use your pinky for anything. When you're grabbing stuff, you mainly grab it with like your whole hand and your pinky's not contributing that much. And then there's no real special function that your pinky does that any other fingers can't, you know? So it tends to be the weakest of the fingers. So doing the around, especially that beginning step that I've been teaching you guys, where you just kind of get a feel for how much force you need is very important with the pinky or with the pinky when you're doing the ring around, sorry. So, just doing that exercise over and over again and not letting the pen hit the table when it goes around like I've been doing is very key to understanding the force. Like that was too weak, for example. Understanding the force. And also, you can see I'm still struggling with it here, but it's the same practice, the same principle for the ring around as the other two arounds. Now, one thing that I will mention is that the ring around tends to be hard again because your pinky is also shorter. And because it's shorter, if the pen is going exactly in one straight line as it's only rotating in one vertical plane, your pinky tends to be shorter and so it has to like reach out more. For example, if I try to clamp down here, you can obviously my pinky's a little bit too short and then it's not gonna catch it and it's gonna fall like that. A way to combat this is to actually tilt your hand slightly outward when you're doing the ring around. And what this does, I'm kind of over exaggerating it here, is when you push it, push the around with your pinky and then when you go to catch it, grab, if you're tilting your hand, again, I'm doing it more extremely for you know demonstration purposes. If you tilt your hand this way, the pen is going to fall downward because of gravity, right? And because of that, when it's spinning around, it's going to more easily fall into that finger slot rather than if you were to do it straight up and down. I'm not saying it's not possible straight up and down. You just have to have a generally longer pinky or you have to kind of move your hand like that to try to catch it. So when I do my ring arounds, I tend to tilt my hand outward a little bit and then that will help pull the pen into that finger slot. So that will do it for my around tutorials, again, for the index, middle, and ring arounds. If you guys are having a little bit of trouble seeing it or understanding it, stay tuned for these slow-mos at the end. I promise they will be there and they will be, you know, of arounds that I can do pretty well rather than the choppy looking ones I've been doing live. Uh, so that'll do it. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe for more content in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.